to the Kailu Wellness Retreat. My name is Calliope, and I'm going to be taking care of you today. Do you mind if I just grab your name real quick? Excellent. Let's see. Okay, there we go. So, we have a face mapping appointment for you today. Is that correct? Wonderful. So, do you know what face mapping is? Do you know what that all entails? Okay. If you'd like, I can pull up a little chart and I can explain to you what we're going to be doing. Absolutely. So, just give me one moment. I'm just going to grab my tablet here. For face mapping, we are going to be, of course, looking at your face and we are just going to be examining it. I'll have a little light, I'll have a little magnifying glass, and essentially any sort of blemishes or anything out of the ordinary going on with your skin in a particular zone is supposed to give us a bit of insight as to what's going on with so face mapping employs two kind of principles, two separate sort of modalities. So I'm going to show you a little picture. And this is going to be of the traditional Chinese medicine face mapping, the TCM version. So with the TCM version, your face corresponds to all different points along your body, all different systems. For example, number one, the small intestines here in your forehead, your bladder around the sides of your forehead, your heart will be around the eyebrows, so on and so forth. So, the more modern version of face mapping somewhat takes some of these principles in mind, but we're not really thinking of it as if you have blemishes, you know, in your heart area, that means that something's going on with your heart. We're not really equating it to that, but what we can say is, for example, if you have blemishes right on your chin, oftentimes, scientifically, that can, that can more suggest that there is a hormonal issue or even that there's a digestion issue. So we're employing both the traditional Chinese methods and also a more modern scientific approach to kind of figure out what's going on with your skin. And after we map out your skin, we can treat those specific areas with whatever they need to help bring your skin to a more smoother, more clear sort of canvas. So, that's our traditional Chinese sort of deal. And again, the modern approach is pretty similar, but instead of taking these systems literally and saying, you know, there could be something wrong with your kidneys if you have something going on under the eyes, it's more that we're looking at you know, is there a lot of oil production in that area? Are you having issues with dry skin? Or maybe there's something going on in your digestion? Those sort of deals. So, I'm going to put that back. Does that sound all okay to you? Do you have any questions at all? Right, yeah, so there can be multiple different areas that need multiple different treatments, um, just like any any other sort of combination skin or oily skin or what have you. Sometimes you need to treat different areas of your face in different ways.
For example, my chin and my nose is extraordinarily dry, but my cheeks get very oily, so I oftentimes have to use specific things for my chin and my nose that I don't carry to the rest of my face. It's kind of the same principles. Okay? Alright. So let me go ahead and just sanitize my hands real quick. And then we are going to cleanse your face. And that will get rid of any excess oil or dirt or debris. And then we can get a better look at what your skin would normally look like without any of those added little bits, right? So for our session today, I will of course need to touch you. Is that okay with you? Have your consent to do that? Wonderful. Thank you. So, let me see. There we are. I'm just going to use a very gentle cleanser. It's safe to use for sensitive skin. And I'm just going to grab a tissue here. very gently cleanse your face, right? Excellent. So, I'm just going to be using small little circles. Cleanse your face. So, do you happen to know just offhand what your skin type is? Okay. Sure. So, actually... While I don't doubt you, we can do a quick little test to see what your skin type tends to be like after we cleanse your face. As you're supposed to wash your face a couple times and not put on any moisturizer, and you can take a tissue like so and tear it into a few pieces and try to Try to place it on your face, and in areas that are dry, the tissue will fall right off. In areas that have more of a normal sort of a normal sort of manner, then it's going to stick for a second or two and then fall off. And then any areas that are more oily, the tissue will stick for much longer. we can just determine a little a little bit about what your skin type is like that little hard and fast test yeah so I'm gonna get a little bit more cleanser and do that once more I want to really We do our little skin test and then we will work on analyzing the skin. And then once we figure out what's going on, then we can get into treating the skin. I have a variety of different products we can use and different little applicators, ways of application. can feel, your skin feels a little tight after that. So, I'm just going to really quick just tear a 
tissue. I'm just going to take a little bit and I'm just going to place that on there. Okay. Oh, so that would be more of a dry area. Let's take another bit and just place that there. Okay, it's a little bit more normal, has a touch more oil to it. About there. So that's also going to be a little bit more normal. And what about on your chin? Okay, touch more dry. And grab another piece. And let's try on your nose here. Okay, that's a little more, more than normal side. So forehead's dry, chin's dry. This area seems to be a little bit more normal. Okay. So I'm going to put on a very, very light moisturizer so that we don't, so that we don't really dry out your skin, right? It's going to be just enough that we don't risk really drying out your skin. There we are. Alright. Just going to very quickly just pat that on there. There we are. And then just work that in. There we are. Just, just a little bit. So. Alrighty. I have a magnifying glass and I have a little pen light here that I'm going to be using to just analyze your skin a little bit more in depth. So, real quick, I'd like to just make a couple notes regarding the findings that we had about your skin type. in your nose. And oftentimes for a lot of people this is more of an oilier area. However, you had a little bit of dryness there, yeah. Yeah. Alright, so just going to take a look at the skin. So, in traditional Chinese medicine, when one is using face mapping to, to determine the health of a person or gain insight into what's going on in the body, blemishes and areas of congestion in the T-zone oftentimes suggest poor digestion or stress or lack of sleep. And to a point, that's fairly similar to what we might say today. I'm just going to take a couple notes here. But nowadays we more want to attribute that to 
uh, an overproduction of oil oftentimes, or even your hair could be making you break out as well, whether it's hair products or just your hair in general being there. Oftentimes we have it in our faces, it's touching our forehead a lot. But usually the first things we think of is oil and then next would be your hair. traditional Chinese medicine, if there is congestion or blemishes in the nose area, they might more contribute that to issues with the heart, or blood pressure, or cholesterol as well. But your nose has your nose can produce a lot of sebum and that can sometimes be the reason for clogged pores, just an overproduction of sebum. Oftentimes a lot of us get a lot of blackheads on our nose for that reason. So nothing to do with, with the heart but just more to do with the skin itself on your nose. down. So another thing you can do if you wear glasses, oftentimes this can also contribute to congestion or skin changes on your nose because we don't often think about it, but the nose piece on our glasses can get pretty oily. So, just cleaning your glasses in that nose piece area regularly can help. But with that overproduction of sebum, or even just normal production, you can exfoliate your nose or exfoliate your face gently. Depending on the product you use, if you use, for example, like a chemical peel, you can do those I believe it's about once a week, maybe twice a week, and more of a manual exfoliation. Sometimes you can do about twice a week. Certainly don't want to overdo it. So I'm going to take a little look at your cheeks now. In traditional Chinese medicine, if one were to have congestion or issues with the skin on the cheeks, their first inclination would be that there is something going on with the lungs. But in a more modern approach, your cheeks can have a variety of different reasons for having skin issues. For example, your environment, if you live in an area with a lot of pollution or a lot of dust, that can contribute, or even just touching your face a lot. We touch our cheeks a lot unconsciously, subconsciously, and makeup can also contribute to that as well. And Lastly, our pillowcases, if we don't wash them enough, you may need to be washing those at least once a week, but if you don't do it enough, then you can also contribute to blemishes and congestion on your cheeks. Very good. I'm going to take a couple of notes. Right. Now I'm going to 
take a look at your chin and your jaw. So, traditional Chinese medicine, this one lines up fairly similarly to our more modern face mapping. And that is, oftentimes, if you have issues with hormones, more notably reproductive hormones, then you can break out a lot on your chin and your jaw. So, another cause in the more modern explanation is that it could be linked to your diet as well. But hormones tend to be the biggest contributor to blemishes and congestion on the chin. I'm going to test to that one myself. My hormones are all out of whack all the time and it shows up in my chin all the time. But that tends to be the most common reason for that. So I'm going to make some final notes regarding that and then we can get on to treating your skin. How are you feeling so far, by the way? Okay, doing okay? Do you need anything to drink or need to stretch at all? Okay, I know you've been sitting so still for me. I do appreciate it. Alrighty. So, let's go ahead and start treating your skin. I'm going to start off with a general serum that's going to go all over your face. And I'm going to do that first so that when I apply the other products to more specific areas, I'm not rubbing them to other spots when I go in with the serum later, if that makes sense. Yeah, we want to do that first because we want it all over the face. And then our other products will layer on top so that that so that they stay more localized. So we're going to use this serum right here. Just a couple of drops there. Nothing too crazy. So these products are hypoallergenic, they're safe for sensitive skin, and this particular product is just going to help plump the skin a bit and aid the moisture of your skin and more of a normal dry sort of continents. Yeah. We're just going to just going to apply that all over the face. It's very light. here, which I'm going to use my finger with and just dot it on your forehead and your chin for for some support in the moisturizing area right on the chin here so the other parts of your face don't need that extra moisture but this is a little more heavy duty.
picture okay for you? take another cotton bud and this time I'm going to use a product that is going to help reduce any hyperpigmentation or scars okay. so most everybody has scars on their face whether it's acne scars or whether it's hyperpigmentation from sun damage or injury scars so this is just going to help lighten and even the tone help with scarring on the face, there's a few things you can do to help reduce the appearance that isn't going to cost you, you know, a ridiculous amount and take a ridiculous amount of time, but you can do light chemical peels that you can do at home you can apply aloe vera gel that also can help. There's a product out there called Bio Oil, I think, that a lot of people use for like stretch marks or, or other scars. So there's, there's certainly different things out there that getting sort of the general area around it rather than just, you know, putting just a dot or a product. a little brightening solution that 
I'm just going to apply under the eyes to help reduce any dark circles. So oftentimes puffy dark eyes can be from stress or lack of sleep or even dehydration. I believe too much salt can be as well. But this helps brighten that area and minimizes the look of that. Although I hear nowadays, I feel old saying that, but it sounds like a lot of people more Gen Z are kind of just embracing the look of dark circles and sometimes exaggerate them even. That's, that's kind of cool. It's always all sorts of little different trends. I mean, I came when I was a kid, pencil thin eyebrows were a thing and I don't think that look looks great on a lot of people but it was just the thing and tons and tons of people have natural dark circles under their eyes I know I do just from how my eyes are situated in my head so I think that's kind of cool Alright, and that will do it for our little individual treatments. So, is there anything else that I can do for you? You just note all that down and I will I'll write down those products for you. them at our spa here. It's no trouble at all, but if you want to price shop, you certainly can. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, if there's nothing else that I can do for you, then I suppose I will bid you adieu. So, I really appreciate you coming in to our wellness retreat today, and I really hope you enjoyed your treatment. Thanks for being here. Hope you have a whale of a day. And a good rest of your night.